Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> so today we are here as we got bombarded by for last three four months after I started the channel and before that also like we had a lot of questions, uh, especially from you. Like, uh, what are the different problems and challenges and other types of questions during a PhD? And you might have seen Nadi because he also uh, collaborated with me before in some. Uh, videos so he's also going to help because he also got many questions during a, what happens during a PhD and what are the other questions surrounding that okay we got another question yeah let's move to another question so is everyone this is a question which I've got also in YouTube comments and also in other social media channels like is everyone financed for the full of the for the entire PhD like 100% financed and is there any difference between that funding when people are doing maybe part-time or full-time or maybe they are from Europe or they are from India? Uh, sorry, I mean they are non-European or European or international. So how does the funding, does it vary between this? So considering the 100% fun funding, I have limited knowledge on that. So it's like, um, as far as I know, like generally the where a PhD is created in Netherlands is like most of the time it's like someone is assigned some budget for a project, huge project like maybe Erasmus project, European project or NRO or NWO and then they that opens up the opportunities for like two PhDs, one postdoc or three PhDs, one postdoc and depending on the funding they can divide how they can distribute it to get different positions and then they open up the advertisements for hiring people for PhD and those cases are almost 100% financed. I mean not almost, it's 100% financed because you are getting like a salary for being hired as a PhD. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking about your own funding, there are some fundings which are given in China. I know a PhD from TU Delft. He was not given any funding from TU Delft, but he was uh, given a position as a PhD because he got funding from the Chinese government. I think it was a Fulbright's, no, Fulbright's is from US, sorry. Uh, it was some kind of a scholarship from the Chinese government to fund the PhD for four years. Mm -hmm. And he just need to write a proposal to the TU Delft research group and they agreed to use that money and give him a position for four years. So this is the two types of funding I know till now. And obviously the funding varies if you are a local or you are international because if you are international I think you need to be fully funded or you have some options like this to get the funding from your own home country via some scholarships or something. Mm -hmm. And if you are a European or you are a local, I am not sure about the scenario although some get this funding from the projects but if they don't get it then what happens maybe I think Nadi can add to that like what happens when you don't have or how you arrange funding or something. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, if, if you don't have a scholarship you have to search for uh, some kind of external finance uh, 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 because else you, you can't, you can't, uh, can't do it. Um, uh, I work uh, as an employee uh, at an applied university um, and uh, they are, uh, uh, I have research projects as, as a finance foundation under my PhD and, and out of those um, projects my, my PhD is um, yeah it's, it's financially, financially supported but uh, I, will, I filed for scholarship, not sure if I can get uh, the scholarship, I'm waiting on that. Um, I have to do a lot of work to get a scholarship, it's not that easy, but if you can, let's do so, because it makes your life much easier and you don't have to worry about your position. And, and uh, if you don't have a strong uh, uh, finance uh, uh, under your PhD, then it can happen that you can't finish your PhD because when there are no finances anymore. Uh, sorry to add something to it, like just to give you a context, Nadi is a part-time PhD here mm -hmm. and he is from the Netherlands and he is applying for scholarships for his PhD, yes. which is doing here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the people who saw videos of the two of us uh, yeah. together before know that I'm an externally yeah. financed and external PhD candidate. And do check out that video in the top right corner in the information card. Um, 
like the video. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. That please do so. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of opportunities and and, and different ways to to, to get uh, the finance uh, you want. But you need some kind of finance, and you need to be uh, strong and secure that you can have it for at least four years that you need to complete your PhD. Or else it, it would be a waste of time if uh, after a year uh, there is no more finance uh, options anymore and then you have to stop your PhD and put in a lot of effort and work. So mm. that, that, that would be disappointing and we don't want that. So maybe I can leave some links below when uh, Nadi shares it. Like what are the ways you can apply for these kind of PhDs when you don't have a finance. So that doesn't mean that you are in a dead end, but you can have options which I'll leave the links below of some scholarship agencies yeah. or something where you can five applications yeah, yeah, yeah enjoy the different parts of the videos and please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and comment below on all the things that we mentioned so that we can make future videos and we know what are your problems yeah. if you don't leave the comments if you remain silent then we won't know so yeah. thank you nadi again for collaborating with this nice thanks for the invite yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was a pleasure. <laughs> it will be going on like this yeah. to give you guys all benefits. Yeah. Okay, bye. Till next time. Peace. Yeah.